reading Disney Pixar's Finding Nemo. Make sure that you like and subscribe, and let's read! Nemo was a little clownfish. He lived with his father, Marlin, on the Great Barrier Reef. Nemo longed for adventure, but Marlin was worried about what might happen to him. On the first day of school, Marlin took Nemo to class. Nemo's teacher, Mr. Ray, promised Marlin that Nemo would be safe. But when Marlin found out that the class was going to the drop-off, a steep cliff, he was furious. He decided to follow the class. At the drop-off, Nemo and his new friends dared one another to swim out and touch a dive boat. Just then, Marlin showed up. You think that you can just do these things, but you can't, he told Nemo. Nemo wanted to prove his dad wrong. He swam to the boat and hit it with his fin, but when he swam back, a diver appeared behind him. The diver pulled out a net and scooped up Nemo. Then he took the little clownfish back to his boat. As he sped off, he accidentally knocked a scuba mask into the water. Marlin chased after Nemo, but he wasn't fast enough. Has anybody seen a boat? He asked any fish that would listen. As Marlin swam, he met a fish named Dory. Hey, I've seen a boat, she said. Follow me. Marlin started to follow Dory, but as soon as they started swimming, she whirled around. Stop following me, she shouted. Marlin was confused. Hadn't Dory just offered to help him find the boat? Then Dory explained that she suffered from short-term memory loss. Figuring Dory couldn't really help him, Marlin turned to leave and found himself face-to-face -face with a great white shark. The shark's name was Bruce. He invited Dory and Marlin to a get-together in an old sunken ship. Marlin was sure it was a trap, but Dory wanted to go. She was the only fish he'd found who had seen a boat, so Marlin followed her. Inside, there were two other sharks named Anchor and Chum. Together with Bruce, they pledged. Fish are friends, not food! Suddenly, Marlin spotted the diver's mask. Dory saw some writing on the strap. She swam over to read it, but the strap snapped against her and her nose began to bleed. Smelling blood, Bruce decided that he wanted to eat Marlin and Dory after all. Miles away, Nemo found himself in a fish tank at a dentist's office. The other fish called themselves the Tank Gang. Their leader was a fish named Gil. The Tank Gang passed time watching the dentists work and talking to their pelican friend, Nigel. Nemo wanted to go home more than anything, but the dentist had other plans. He was going to n give Nemo to his niece, Darla. The Tank Gang warned Nemo that Darla's fish never lived for very long. Nemo's new friends didn't want to get him hurt. They had to find a way to escape. Gil had a plan. When he explained that if someone could jam the filter, the dentist would have to take the fish out of the tank to clean it. They could escape by rolling out the window and into the harbor. Back in the ocean, Dory and Marlin had escaped the sharks and dragged the mask into a deep, dark cave. Marlin struggled to hold on to the lighted antenna of the anglerfish while Dory studied the writing on the mask. P. Sherman, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Dory read. Marlin knew that must be the diver's address. Soon, Marlin and Dory were on their way to Sydney. Suddenly, Dory bumped into a tiny jellyfish. I shall call him Squishy, and he shall be mine, she said happily. But Squishy wasn't alone. Marlin and Dory had swum into an entire forest of deadly jellyfish. The jellyfish stung the friends, making them feel weak and tired. By the time they reached the safety of the open water, they had been stung all over their bodies. Holding on to the injured Dory, Marlin fell asleep. When Marlin woke up, he was lying in the back of a sea turtle shell. All around them, hundreds of sea turtles rode with lightning-fast East Australian current. While Dory played hide-and-seek with his young turtle named Squirt, Marlin told the turtles about his search for Nemo. Squirt told the story to a lobster, who told it to a dolphin. Soon, Marlin's story spread out all the way to Sydney, where Nigel heard it. Nigel sped off to the dentist office. Your dad's been fighting the entire ocean looking for you, he told Nemo. And the word is he's heading this way right now to Sydney. Really? Nemo asked. He couldn't believe his dad was so adventurous. Marlin was risking everything to save him. Nemo realized that if he was ever going to get home, he had to be brave. He picked up a pedal and carefully jammed it into the tank's filter. 
Soon the tank would be so dirty the dentist would have to take the fish out and clean it. But escaping was not so easy. When the fish woke up in the morning, the tank was clean. The dentist had installed a new filter. Nemo's escape plan was ruined. As the dentist scooped up Nemo and put him into a plastic bag, the office door banged open. Darla had arrived. But the, when the dentist looked inside the plastic bag, Nemo was floating belly up. Nemo winked at his friends. He was pretending to be dead. Meanwhile, outside Sydney, Marlin and Dory had met Nigel. The pelican flew them straight into the dentist's office. When Marlin saw Nemo floating lifelessly in the bag, he thought his son was dead. Before Marlin could learn the truth, the dentist shooed Nigel away. Out with ya, he cried, and stay out! Nigel returned to the harbor and dropped Marlin and Dory into the water. Marlin wanted to be alone. He swam out to sea, leaving Dory behind. A few minutes later, Nemo swam out of a nearby pipe. He had been flushed down the drain. Nemo saw Dory swimming in circles. Are you alright? he asked. I'm Nemo. You're Nemo! Dory cried, hugging him happily. Nemo and Dory raced after Marlin. Daddy! Nemo cried out. Marlin couldn't believe it. Nemo was alive after all. It was time to go home. Several weeks later, Nemo was back home and ready for school. This time, Marlin was ready too. He knew that his son could take care of himself. Nemo waved as he swam away. Bye, Dad! Oh, wait, I forgot something. He swam back and hugged Marlin. Love you, Dad. Marlin smiled. I love you too, son, he said. Now go have an adventure. The end. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure that you like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.